If you will, for a moment this evening, turn your Bibles with me over to the book of Judges. The chapter is number 10. We will commence reading at verse number three. Judges chapter 10, beginning at verse number three. That's my assignment. But I'd like to include one more verse, if I could. Beginning at verse number three of Judges chapter number 10. The Bible says, and after him arose Jair, a Galadite, and judged Israel 20 and two years. And he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass coats. And they had 30 cities, which are called Hava Jair unto this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Cumon. Verse 6 says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and Sir Balaam, and Astaroth, and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of Philistines, and forsook the Lord, and served not him. You're wondering what would be the text title. In case you missed it, uh, I want you to read with me one more time, if you will. Um, I'm, I'm starting to feel at home now, so don't, don't y'all get scared. Look at verse number three one more time. And after him arose Jair, a Galadite, and judge Israel, and judge Israel twenty and two years, and he had, I'm gonna slow it down for you, and he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ass coats, and they had 30 cities, which I call Havoth Jair unto this day. Verse 5, and Jair died and was buried. What are you going to talk about this evening, Brother Kimmins? I want us to look at something real simple here, and that is when the purpose gets lost. When the purpose gets lost. When, when reveals the exact time or the specific event, or even the life's condition or situation, that a specific thing happened and took place. Purpose, the reason for which this thing or something is done or created, or even for which something exists. When I think of the word loss, my mind comes to say, when a decision is rendered, that you are unable or unwilling to pursue or to continue a direction, a prescribed lifestyle even, or submitting to a particular authority when the purpose gets lost. Stay with me now. In this book of Judges, Judges is the account of how Israel behaves between the deaf of Joshua and the leadership of a king. Instead of remaining loyal to God and following his laws, this generation of Israel wanders in their faith when the purpose gets lost. This generation of Israel begins to worship idol gods when the purpose gets lost. Oh, you're going to be with me in a moment here. This generation of Israel begins to indulge in their fleshly desires to violate 
God's word. When the purpose gets lost, this generation of Israel became just like all other nations around them when the purpose gets lost. If we're not careful today, we ourselves as leaders and as people of God will lose our purpose. I can hear the writer say in Hebrews chapter 2, he says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them do what? Slip away. It might not be your intentions today to avoid coming to Bible study, but life has a way of making things slip away. It might not be your intentions of not being a forgiving person to somebody, but pressure has a way of making that forgiving spirit slip away. Hello, somebody. I recall the writer said in Titus chapter 2, he said, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. What did it do, Brother Kimmons? It says, teaching us, teaching us. Titus chapter 2 and 11, it says, teaching us. Teaching us what? To deny ungodliness. Don't be like everybody else. Deny ungodliness. That means deny. That means you're going to be approached with it, but you got to know how to deny it, how to put it away. It said, and worldly lust. It said, we should live soberly. We should live. Who? The ones who have received that grace of God. We should live how? Soberly and righteously. Where? And godly in this present age. I mean, my buddy might not like me, but God loves me. Uh, you may not like the way I walk, but God loves me. Well, you and I might not get along, but I cannot compromise my position in Christ for our friendship. The book of Judges set forth a pattern, a pattern of sin and how God deals with that sin. Watch with me here. When you go to Judges chapter 2 just for a moment, I got to show you something there. Judges chapter 2, screen back a couple of pages, about verse number 11. The Bible says, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God and served Baal. I ain't going to read all of it, but verse 12 says, and they forsook the Lord God. Watch the downhill spiral. And they did evil, then they forsook the Lord. The same verse says, and they, and they followed other gods. The same verse said, and they bowed themselves down to other gods. And the same verse said, they provoked the Lord to what? Anger. And again, verse 13 says, again, and they forsook the Lord. And watch this. Verse 15 says, whether soever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. Look at that. Israel turns to God or turns from God and serves idols. God turns Israel over to their oppressors, the surrounding nations. Israel turns to God and cries out for help. Don't that sound like somebody? God raises up a judge to deliver them. Do you see the cycle? Israel rebels, God disciplines, Israel repents, God delivers. Look, they were disobedient and idolatrous, and that led to many of their defeats. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, the stuff that we're going through is because we're not living like God wants us to live. Sometimes a lot of defeats in our life don't come from bad investments. It's not allowing the word of God to invest in you. Ah, look at here. What are we getting at, Brother Kevin? Yet God has never failed to open up his arms of love to his people. Whenever they repent from their wicked ways, and call upon his name and turn to him in obedience to his word. The purpose is to teach Israel that God is faithful 
and he's certain to punish sin. Therefore, each person must remain loyal and devoted to him. Oh, even among us today, that same word still speaks. Remember over in 1 Peter or 2 Peter chapter 3, around verse number 8, where he says, But beloved, be not what? Ignorant is one thing, that one day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years to one day. I know he's talking about his return. But watch verse 9. It said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as what? Long suffering to who us were, not willing that any should perish, but all shall come to what? Repentance. Hold up now. I, I got to slow it down for you here. See, here's where we get confused. We get things messed up in our mind. See, he says, he says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What God said he's going to do, God's going to do. Uh, you hear me? Whatever God said he's going to do, God going to do. My Bible, when I read, it says God is not a man that'll tell you a lie. So when God speaks it, it's going to come to pass. Well, watch this though now. He said, as some men count, but God is long suffering. He's not willing to anybody to perish. But here's the problem. He said he wants all men to come. To come. To what? Repentance. Now, <laughs> it take a long time for me to listen to you to tell me I'm wrong. I got to change my way. Now, the Lord puts this change in my own hands. How long it take me to come to come to repentance? Well, let me draw a picture for you. See, what happens is we do wrong over here. And we say, well, I sold wrong over here. But now I'm going to reap over here. Watch what the enemy does. He makes you think that all this time in the middle, you done got over. He makes you think, ain't nothing going to happen to you. Keep doing your wrong. Ain't nothing happen. Do some more wrong. And while wrong's still going on, you still sowing wrong, and you don't see no results of you sowing wrong because it's on this side over here. So you keep going. You forget the idea. In the middle is mercy and grace. Because God is not willing for you to perish. But you stay out there because the enemy tells you, ain't nothing going to happen to you. Keep doing what you're doing. When you forget the idea, that's God's mercy. God does not want you to perish, but he wants you to come to repentance. The problem sometimes is we don't want to see things from the eyes of God. But he is our deliverer. He cares about it. Now, let's go back. Let's go here. The scripture says, a new cycle. When the purpose is forgotten. Judges 10, that my, my, my passage says about Jair, it says he led Israel 22 years, had 30 sons. Sons rode on 30 donkeys, controlled 30 towns. <laughs> uh, had her own place called Havo Jair. But it says Jair did what? He died. Well, that was the most significant things the scripture said about him. Well, I got some questions this evening. He had 30 sons. I don't know if each son had a different mother or they all had the same mother. But what I deduce from all of this is that he invested a whole lot of personal time into family. He, he, yes, he did. Because I know it takes at least nine months for one to come. He invested a whole lot of time into preparation, planning, developing, leading, and maintaining a family of 30 boys. Ah, I got three and I know it's hard. But after all that, the scripture says, but that's not what God had put you there for. 
in chapter 2, when we went back there in verse 16, it said when the people of God went through something, it said the idea in verse 16 of chapter 2, never let the Lord raise up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And it goes on saying God was with that judge. Wait a minute now. He raised you up to deliver them. That means God had to direct and guide you and tell you what to say, because I need you to produce some sorrowful, repenting hearts to come to me in obedience. But rather than try to build up God's family, he built up his family when the purpose gets lost. Sometimes in our lives, we forget the idea of who we are. And we start doing our own agenda, doing our own thing. Uh, I don't like the way uh, Brother Turner sings his song. So while he's singing one song, I'm going to sing another one from my seat. We start trying to change things on our own. But that's not what God put us here for. God put us here to be lights to a dark world, to lead other people to Christ. But in this passage, the purpose got lost. I see again the idea that each son rode around on ass coats and donkeys and mules and so on and so forth. That was like riding something of honor in those days. Wait a minute now. You're bringing yourself to honor. Where's God at? Where's God in this picture? You, you, you build up 30 cities and gave one to each son. Wow, a position of notoriety, of authority. Look up to my son. What about looking unto God? What about focusing on God? He put you there for that reason. Well, what do you mean, Brother King? Well, I'm, 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 I'm almost there. I recall in Joshua chapter 23, I won't read all of it to you, but in chapter 23, I heard Joshua telling the people, and verse 3 said, you have seen all the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that brought or that fought for you. Do you know? You couldn't do nothing against sin by yourself. Come here now. I know you strong, but you ain't that strong. On your best day, you can't handle sin by yourself. Hello, somebody. On your best day, it's hard for you to make yourself stop eating cake at midnight. <laughs> Hello, somebody. On your best day, it's hard for you to make yourself, you know what, today, I'm just going to be nice to somebody today. And the moment somebody crosses you, you just, you can't deal with it by yourself. You need some help. It is God that goes before you. Verse 6, he tells them, he said, but ye therefore be very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Don't turn to side, don't turn left, right hand, don't turn left hand. When you come among the nations, those that remain around you, don't make mention of the name of their God. Don't even call out who they are, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them. Don't even bow yourself down before them. But verse 8 said, but cleave unto the Lord your God. You know what I found out so far in my life? I found out. For God not to be so good or so powerful, why is everybody trying to keep you from serving him? If God won't do nothing for your life, leave me alone. Go do whatever you're going to do. Where you going? I'm going to worship. Why are you going there for? It ain't going to help you. Well, if it ain't going to help you, leave me alone. But you understand? But if there's something to it, the devil going to try to keep you from it. But what you got to do is, in the strength of God, you got to have the courage to tell yourself, no matter what goes on in my life, I'll never forget my God who brought me thus far. 
You got to tell yourself every day you wake up, you got to be ready to fight, to tell not just other folk, but you got to, sometimes you got to look at yourself and pull yourself out of yourself and put it right there and stand there and grab yourself and shake yourself. Sometimes you got to grab yourself and tell yourself, self, today you're going to act right today. Today, self, you're going to be a child of God today. Self, today, you're going to fall in line with the word of God and then step back into yourself. You got to be courageous to be a child of God. Because if you don't, God's purpose will get lost. It will get lost. It's hard to find it when it gets lost. Look here. Look at his legacy. Jair's legacy. It's the same old fault. It's the same old accusation. It's the same old stumbling block. I know God's purpose got lost. Because when I drop down to chapter 10 at verse number 6, you got to notice something. That was a severe indictment against God's people. In verse 6, look at this. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Now I want you, if you can write in your Bibles. You know the idea in that passage? There are seven different idol gods. Seven of them. Now they start off with just one. Now they got seven of them. That's seven. But you know the same passage? When you read it, Look how many times the word and cops in there. And serve Balaam. And Ashtaroth. And the gods. And the gods of Zidon. And the gods of Moab. And the gods of Chiranana. And the gods of Philistine. And for some God. It pops in there nine times. I counted them. Nine times. Seven gods. And nine times it said and. Seven is a number of completion. Nine is a finality number when you look at it. Seven and nine together. That means the idea that their apostasy or their rebellion was repeated, it was widespread, and it was wholehearted. They put themselves into it. They put on seven of them. And it says that now the final, God is going to have the final word now. Oh, I know he is, because finality is coming. I can hear it coming already, because as I read the passage, as I read, I, I see, I hear God in verse number 13 of chapter 10. He said, yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. <laughs> Ah, come on now. Sometimes God get tired too. He get tired too. And it's a fearful thing when God takes his hand off of his people. You don't want to be in that predicament. It said, because it said, go, he told him, go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Ooh, ain't that heavy? He said, cry to the one that you chose. Have them deliver you. See, I want to understand something this evening. There's a difference between having relief and wanting to be renewed. <laughs> Some of us just want relief. Get this off of me. Uh, if you, Lord, if you remove this, I'll come to church on Sunday morning. Uh, but once God removes that, uh, I, I see you next Sunday. See, a lot of us just want relief and not renewal. Well, I heard the writer of Romans say, I beseech ye therefore, brethren. I, 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 I just love illustrations. By the mercies of God. Let's put mercies right here. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. You know the rest of the story. But the next verse says, and be ye not conformed 
Let's put conform over here. You got mercy right there. He said, but be ye transformed. Let's put transformation over here. By the, now in the middle of being conformed and transformed is a renewed mind. A renewed mind. Now, like them, what they thought was their oppression was their condition. No, your condition led to you being oppressed. Your condition is your relationship you got with God. The stuff is happening to you right now because your relationship is messed up. That's why I got them folk out there oppressing you right now. But you think the idea of their oppression on you is with your, no, it ain't your condition. Us today, we got to decide if we're going to be conformed to the ways of the world or we're going to be transformed. But with, and to do that, you got to have a renewed mind. Well, Brother Kimmel, how do I make the decision on whether I want to conform or be transform. I can tell you how by one word. I said, put it right there. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. That's how you know. When I see how merciful God's been, I decide, do I want to conform to this world, be like everybody else, or do I want to be transformed by renewing my mind? I heard the writer in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 21 say, it, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's <laughs> mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're all right. But we're uncareful. Our purpose becomes lost. Closing. What was all this done for? God was trying to get one thing out of them. Because they weren't oppressed, nobody's bothered them. They didn't think about coming to God. The leaders thought that it's okay, I'll build up something for myself. We all right now, but you're not all right. So then God had turned around there, later on in verse eight and verse nine, it said the idea, he let them go. And for 18 years, verse eight says, they were sorely oppressed. 18, I can't imagine 18 years of going through something. When I go through some of my wife at home for, for 10 seconds, I'm ready to renew this thing. I can't imagine 18 years of the Lord not having his hand on me. And I go through, you, you, you hear what I'm saying? You can change your life by giving your life to God. You don't have to go through what you go through. You don't have to live in this world and be of this world. You can be a child of God. I guarantee you God will protect you. God will keep you. I heard the writer say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I heard a writer say, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Do you know what you got? Do you, are you sure what you're working with? But God did them like this because he wanted to bring them what? To repentance. Oh, I heard him say it. I heard him say it. They cried to him. They cried to him. And they screamed out loud to him. Lord, deliver us. We have sinned. We have done wrong. Do whatever you want to do with us. But please, Lord, deliver us. That's all he was looking for. He was looking for them to repent. And God is looking for us to repent too. Have a desire to change your ways. God is a merciful God, not what anybody should perish, but all should come to repentance. Do you know Jesus took your place too? Yeah, he did. The Lord took your place. The Lord did not lose his purpose. He saw his purpose all the way through. Coming through the garden of Gethsemane, he saw it all the way through. He saw it to the end, even on Calvary's cross. He met it all the way through. For you, for all of us. You know, I, 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 I heard a story. He told me I got 60 minutes now. <laughs> I heard a story about this king. And he put a decree out. And he said, the soul 
the sinner this shall die. And they said, King, there's somebody stealing in the neighborhood, and we can't get him to stop. He said, I tell you what to do. The one that's stealing, when you find him, bring him before me. I'm going to punish him with many stripes. Have the executioner get ready. Tell everybody that. They told everybody that. Next day come in and say, King, they still stealing. They won't stop. He said, you tell them they're going to get beat with 30 stripes by my strongest executioner. Put a word out there. Next day, King, they still stealing. Came in one and said, King, we got him. Found him. He said, get it ready. The executioner came back, big, strong, burly guy. Big, strong man. Put his mask on, big muscles, grabbed his whip, and you could hear it just whistling through there. He getting it ready. Whip is about 30 feet long, weigh about 20 pounds, just swinging. He said, bring her out in front. I want everybody to see. There won't be no more stealing here. When the king looked out there, they undressed her, and he saw it was his own mother. He had to make a decision. Do I let him go through with the execution? Because if I don't, it's going to make me look bad. I got to do something. What do I do? What do I do? I love her so much. I don't want to see her go through this. What can I do? Executioner came up front, starts swinging his whip, getting it ready for the first blow. The king got up from his, his throne, took, his, took his, his crown off, took his jewels off, raised his hands. Executioner, hold on. Almost fell down, he dropped the whip. He walked out there to the woman that was his mother, took off his robe, wrapped it around her. So her whole body was covered. Weighed his hand up, executioner, swing away. Every blow he swung, he struck the king, tore up his garments. King full of blood, soaked all on him. He said, continue on to the last strike. When he got done, the king leaned over and to the woman's ear. He said, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. Took off a robe and told her, walk away. Don't you know that what Jesus did for you? He took the punishment that you should have took. By his stripes, come on somebody, we are healed. The chastisement that we should have got was placed on his shoulders. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't lose his purpose? Aren't you glad the Lord stuck to his purpose? And because he took the punishment, we've been set free. Now, go and don't lose your purpose. Don't lose your purpose. I thank you all just for giving me a chance to come here, just to share a word. Or when the purpose gets lost, Jair lost his purpose. Don't you lose yours. Remember why God has brought you, why God has saved you, why God has lifted you up, why God has brought you along this way. So never forget. And when you go out in the world, don't be of the world. Be an example to the world. If you're here this evening, and you're not a child of God, you don't have to leave here the same way you came. You came in here lost, you can leave here found. You came in here hopeless, you can leave here hopeful. You came in with no home, I can show you a home he got prepared just for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. What the Bible says, you hear this evening, you can come, believe in that gospel message, believe in that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Believe in that. Repenting of your sins. Repent and be converted. Confessing to be your Lord and your Savior.
Then you're ready to submit to him in water baptism for what? The remission of your sins. And what happened? I put you in the right place, but Lord adds you to the church. If you're here this evening, you can come. You receive that word while we stand and sing and we taste the song.